If you're learning how to work on electronics, you will definitely need to learn how to solder. I'm making a video series about some soldering basics, and in this video I'll be showing you how to apply solder. The basics of this is the same whether you're applying it to circuits or just wires. For this video, I'll be demonstrating with some wires. Let's start with some bad animations. With your soldering iron hot, put it on the back side of the part to be soldered. Bring the solder into contact with the wire opposite from the iron. Let's look at a cross section of this. You can see that the wire is touching the iron at one small point. This makes it take a long time for the wire to heat up enough to melt the solder, so here's the tip to speed that up. Before adding solder to the wire, add a little bit of solder to the iron. Now put the wire into that little bit of solder. This will give the wire more surface area to contact the heat, helping to melt the solder faster when you touch it to the wire. That's the basic process, so now let's demonstrate with some actual wires. Without any solder on the iron, the solder isn't melting quickly. After adding some solder to the iron, the wire heats up enough to melt the solder very quickly. Now I can rub the solder onto the wire to coat it, but notice that it's not coating the wire effectively. The melted solder is clumping up and looks like it has a weird skin on it. It's just not bonding to the wire effectively. The reason is because of the type of solder. More specifically, this is solid wire solder. Although it's not very common for electronics, you may still encounter it. You can see that when it melts, it has that weird skin coating it. That skin is an oxide layer and it blocks a wire from bonding to the copper. The type of solder that you want to use is rosin core solder. From a glance it looks the same, but when you look closer, you can see that it appears to be hollow. The center is filled with some flux. When this solder melts, it burns the flux and that prevents it from forming the oxide skin. When using this solder, it's still helpful to put some solder onto the iron first. It still clumps up when you use a lot, but it doesn't have the oxide layer. When you move it around, it actually coats the wire instead of just building up on top of it. My next video will be about flux, and I will also talk about that oxide layer. Before ending this video, I do need to mention another thing. Another factor that can affect soldering is the size of the part that you're trying to solder. Here we have a thicker wire than before. Obviously, we know that it helps to put solder onto the iron first, but even after that, it still doesn't seem to be melting the solder. The reason is because bigger parts take longer to heat up. After about a minute, I got impatient and decided to melt a bit of solder to bridge it onto the wire. Sometimes this can help transfer the heat a little bit faster. You can see that this solder has an oxide film and is mostly just building up onto the wire. I was using that no flux solder here as a reminder that flux is necessary. So make sure you check out my next video which will be about flux. I will show you how to use flux to fix this situation if you come across it. This video is part of a series that I'm making about soldering basics. I will be adding more videos to the series over time and I may even add updated versions of some. Subscribe if you haven't already, so that you don't miss out on any of my future updates. If you have any suggestions for what you would like to see in some of these videos, please leave a comment and let me know. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you for watching.